All right, so I was going to show you how to make your own Google Doc work sample. So I'm assuming you know how to make your own Google Doc. If I need to teach you that, then this is probably going to be really hard for you, so um, stop watching now. Anyway, um, to make a Google Doc work sample, you just make a Google Doc, and then you start just start typing. You put in the headings of different things that you want. So I just put Willamette University, uh, Julio Estudias, the student whose work sample this is, and spring semester. Um, another thing you can do is you can always insert uh, page breaks for the purpose of kind of organizing. Also, when you print things out, um, it will it will cut the page at these page breaks and skip to the next one. Um, so if you want to input, basically what you're going to end up with is a Google Doc that's like a website um, that'll have a table of contents with a bunch of links. Um, so when the person looks at your Google Doc work sample and they see content rationale, they'll just click on it and it'll kick them down to that part of your um, Google Doc. So in order to do that, you look here under this um, drop-down menu that says normal text. This is where you select which type of heading it's going to be. Now, um, this doesn't mean that you only have six headings. These are just types of headings. So uh, if I have like a main heading, a, a main area, like contextual factors, I might choose heading one. If I feel like that's too big, like the actual size is too big, I might just do heading two. But then I'll need to know um, after, or what I'll need to do is if I have subheadings, I'll have to remember that I chose two for that one. So for the next one, I'll have to choose three and four and so on. Let me just kind of show you how this works. So adaptations would be um, another, may, might be another section. So I just do that. Um, well, let's say they're part of contextual factors. So let's change that to a three. Since contextual factors is a two and this is part of that, we're going to make it a three. So let's do uses of technology. We'll make that a three. Now, however you want to organize yours is up to you. Um, the content section, maybe that's a different heading, so I'm going to do two again. And you see that they're different sizes. Then what will happen is uh, you go back up to the top. If I hit return to give myself a space, and I go back to this insert button, you'll see that there's a place that says table of contents. We click that. It automatically takes the information that you put in um, related to what types of headings these are and it uses those headings to make your table of contents. Things that I said were a two um, appear here first. Things that I said were a three are slightly more indented and appear below those those other items. So it follows the order that they are in the page and then the actual indentations um, are related to which one of these that I chose. Now I've got a table of contents in here now. If I continue uh, making things different headings. So I'm going to make that one a three. I don't know why. I'm just randomly doing things. Uh, I'll make the other, the lesson plans fours. And what you'll notice is when I do this, you don't see them up here in the table of contents. If I click that and hit update now, the changes that I made will appear there. So just remember that when you come to the end of your um, <clears throat> creating this, that you may need to click back here and hit update now and you can do that as many times as you want. Um, also if you experience trouble like oh this isn't appearing the right way just go back and do it again. Just click click your cursor anywhere on that line and do it again and it will refresh it and then just go any changes you make refresh here too. So that's pretty much it. <clears throat> it's pretty straightforward. Let me know if you have questions.